fellowship and the, the happy voices, but I want to get started this morning. Can we all just stand and, and, and pray this morning and, and ask God to have his way in this meeting? Hallelujah. I'm so grateful, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to be in your house. God, to hear your word, Lord Jesus. I pray that God that you speak a specific word into the hearts and into the minds of the people of the house of God today, Lord Jesus. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your spirit, Lord Jesus. And God, I thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, God. Lord, let your anointing fall in this place. Let it touch our hearts and our minds, God. And let your word, let your word fall on good ground, Lord Jesus. Lord, let it not be taken by the birds or the fowls of the air, God. But let your word come into our hearts. And let us receive, God, that which that you would have us to receive, God. Lord Jesus, have your way in this meeting today, Lord, for your glory and for your kingdom's sake, God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, can we give him a hand clap of praise in this place? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Welcome. You can be seated. I'm excited to relay what God's put in my spirit just upon, uh, we've been talking about the gifts of the spirit for the last three weeks, amen, we opened with uh, tongues and interpretation, tongues and interpretations, is, is, it's a special gift, amen, God wants to speak to his people through the means of the mouth of a person, amen, amen. We see word of knowledge and word of wisdom operating in the, in the same way where God wants to operate and speak to his people through the mouth of a human being. That, that's what makes it different than really anything else that uh, we could see manifested, amen. We can see somebody receive the Holy Ghost uh, by evidence of speaking in other tongues as God gives the utterance, amen. But when we see these, uh, we could call them vocal spiritual gifts operate, it's something really special, and it's something to really be cherished, amen. And so the last couple of weeks, we've been breaking down what the, the principles of the doctrine of Christ are, amen. I want to read that scripture before we move on here, just to get a, a basis or an idea of what, we're, what I'm trying to convey through the word of God, amen. So Hebrews 6, 1 through 3 you got it? It says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms, and of the laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. Amen. Praise God. So that's what we've been breaking down here the last couple months. Amen. Is the principles... That word there is, is just the teaching of the doctrine of Christ. And when we have the doctrine of Christ, we then have a foundation. And the scripture here says in verse 1, if we leave the foundation where it's at, if we leave these uh, five things that the word of God gives us in the place where Jesus Christ then becomes the chief cornerstone within our faith or with our relationship with him, then we can move on to perfection. Amen. That's what the scripture says here. So we've been breaking down what the principles of the doctrine of Christ are. And we're on the laying on of hands, which is the spiritual gifts that God gives us. Amen. Last week we broke down what the word of wisdom is, what wisdom in itself is. Amen. And wisdom, is, it's pretty simply put, is this right here. Wisdom's given by God. The scripture says that wisdom is the beginning of understanding. As we learned, we learned about what the tongue was. Amen. What did we learn that it was? It gives death and life through what comes out of it. With what our tongue says, amen, is death or life. And some kind of teaching or some kind of uh, gathering of understanding comes from the tongue, amen. And so that we see wisdom helps control the tongue because wisdom is not knowledge. Wisdom is, I would say, uh, knowledge plus. It's, wisdom is a thing by which we use knowledge 
but gained by experience. Amen. And then we see, obviously, wisdom is enhanced through experience, but also wisdom shuts, I changed this, I don't know why I didn't change this one slide, but it shuts the mouth of the ignorant person. Wisdom, we see Jesus use wisdom in a means by where he uses uh, the wisdom of his mind, the wisdom that God gave him, amen, to shut the mouths of the Pharisees, amen. He used the mouth or the word of wisdom to shut the mouth of the ignorant people, which in this, uh, this setting of scripture was the Pharisees, amen. And it's so important to gain wisdom. Without wisdom, we have, uh, we have a sh- very small ability to grow, amen, but once we gather wisdom, amen, it's much easier to, to move on, amen. Last week, we talked about building on wisdom. We talked about a wise woman and building her house, how she would build it a specific way. She would have it all planned out, amen, but then we also talked about a, a, a woman that doesn't build her house, but a woman that is boisterous and clamorous, amen. It's so important. Uh, Matthew 7 and 24 says that a wise man built his house upon a rock. Proverbs 9 and 1 says that wisdom, uh, a woman who builds with wisdom says that builded her house and she have uh, hewn out or she made it with seven pillars. Amen. So there has to be a foundation by which that we have gained wisdom within our life. Like I said, knowledge is the means of gaining uh, information about something. But wisdom is gained through experiencing what we understand through knowledge. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the word of knowledge, the spiritual gift of the word of knowledge. God can operate through uh, the means of, of knowledge. He can operate through the means of wisdom. When we think about how uh, just knowledge is in its own self, I mean, it's just having an understanding of something, amen? We see Jesus using knowledge, amen, to, uh, to tell the, the disciples specifically where the fish were at in the water. And what, it, what happens? They, they cast their net and they pull up so much fish that it breaks the net that the whole boat is full of fish. We see Matthew uh, 17, 24 through 25. And it says, and they were come to uh, Capernaum and they had that received the money or the tribute came to Peter and said, doth not your master pay tribute? And he said, yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him saying, what do you think, Simon? Of whom do the things, uh, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? (coughs) And of their own children or of strangers? Obviously not. The kings aren't paying tribute. The kings aren't uh, paying their their own taxes to themselves. They might. But in my understanding, I wouldn't be paying it to myself if I was the king. Right? Why, Why would you? There's no point. So Peter was outside having that conversation about whether or not Jesus pays tribute. But then what happens? Peter goes inside the building But Jesus wasn't out there. Jesus was already inside the house and he didn't have to hear what was said because he already knew what was going to be said. That is a word of knowledge. I'm not sure if any of you have had somebody maybe pray over you in an altar or just a specific situation in life where somebody gives you a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. And that word of knowledge or that word of wisdom is for that specific moment by which that God wants to encourage you. Because what are spiritual gifts for again? They're for the edification of the body. They're for edification. That means building up. But also construction is demolition. It's also tearing down some things at the same time. Amen. So if somebody comes to you with a word of wisdom, just take it. Just listen to it and kind of dwell and, and, and hear what God's trying to speak to you through that person. Let me tell you this. We can have preachers come up here and we get so caught up with what they say and what they do and what they're trying to convey. But understand this. God uses the mouth of humans to speak to people. So when a man of God is up there, they're not just trying to 
They're not just uh, trying to take their own authority or trying to uh, speak the fancy thing that they see on YouTube or whatever this charismatic uh, popular thing is. I mean, some people do that, which is a shame. But the thing is, is that God's trying to speak to us. And who am I to shut the mouth of God? Who am I to, to remove that sensitivity of what God is trying to say to me? Just because I may not agree with everything the man of God says. It's like that. But that's why we have to be ready to receive a word of God. Regardless of the, the, the situation, regardless of where we're at in our lives, God may be trying to speak to you. God may be trying to speak into your spirit. And not only this, the word of God is explained that, that it's quick, which means that it's a living word. And that also it's powerful and it's so sharp. The scripture says that it, it divides even the bone marrow within our bones. And sometimes a word is not going to feel good. Sometimes a word is going to go against your ideologies or the word is going to go against maybe some convictions that, that you may hold within your flesh. But let me tell you this, it is so much better to obey the voice of God than it is to, to reject the word of God through your flesh. Amen. There's things in the word of God that are settled. There's things in the word of God that have to take place within our lives in order for us to move on to the next point. There's things that have to happen within our own life where we move from this point to where God wants to take us. Amen. Matthew 17 and 27 says, Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first comes up. And when you have opened its mouth, you, should, you shall find a piece of money Take that and give unto them for me and thee. That is a word of knowledge. God gave, Jesus gave a specific word. To, he said, do this. You're going to find this. <coughs> and this is going to be the result. That's a word of knowledge. If it was a word of wisdom, amen, we could have seen Jesus telling him, you know, Jesus could have said, well, this is how you melt the copper, and this is how you make the money, like how we saw last week and how uh, Bezalel had to build uh, the specific furniture within the, uh, the specific furniture within the tabernacle or within the, the temple, amen? That is wisdom, um, a means of having to understand how something operates in the, in the means and the, in the meat of, of what makes that thing happen is the wisdom of it. Jesus could have told, uh, he could have told them, just make the money. Here, here's how you do it. We're going to operate in this way, and, and this is how you do it. But Jesus said, no, this is it right here. You're going to find a piece of money, you're going to take it, and you're going to give it to him. Jesus had a word of knowledge. He said, go fishing in the sea, catch the first fish, open its mouth, and be there. We see the same thing with Jesus telling them where the cult would be. We see the same thing happening with the Passover, telling them where they're going to meet. Regardless of, the, uh, regardless of them planning the, the whole thing, Jesus said, this is what's going to happen, and we're going to do it. That's a word of knowledge. Amen. Knowledge is a, uh, an interesting thing. Knowledge is so imperative to everything that we do. It takes knowledge to be able to speak. It takes knowledge to be able to uh, comprehend what's going on before us. It takes, uh, it's a gift from God. Knowledge in itself is a gift from God. Whether it's uh, work knowledge, whether it's knowledge of things of the Spirit, it is a gift from God, just like wisdom is a gift from God. We learn that wisdom, without wisdom, we don't have understanding of things. Amen. So what is knowledge? The first time knowledge is used in the Bible is in Genesis uh, 2 and 9. <coughs> Sorry. It says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge and of good and evil. <coughs> so we see knowledge... 
really in what it is, knowledge is to know what is good and evil. But wisdom is how to use the good things and the evil things for the purpose that God gives us to fulfill. The difference between an engineer and a field worker, amen, is that the, and the engineer uses knowledge of what they want done, but the field worker uses the wisdom on how to fulfill that task at hand, amen. At work, we were... Uh, all the blueprints are a different size than, than what we had to use with the special mosaic that goes on this floor that we're doing. And it was six feet bigger than the print showed. So I had to get with the engineer, which said, well, this is what the architects want. I said, well, that's not going to work. There's not enough space. There's not enough this. There's not enough that in order for it to work. So we're going to have to cut it down, and we're going to have to do this in order for it to work. Amen. So there's the engineer using his knowledge and saying, this is what I want. This is, this is what I, what's going to happen. But through the wisdom that I have, I let him know either whether that's going to work or not through the processes of gaining that understanding from all the years that I've done that type of work. Amen. Proverbs 8, 9 through 12 says, They are all plain to him that understandeth, <coughs> and write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with the prudence, and find out the knowledge of witty inventions." Our knowledge and our wisdom is so important. You know, don't discount the, the things that you've learned from your past. Often, and I've done this myself, I, I take all that stuff I went through in the past before my relationship with God, and I just kind of throw it out the window. But there's so many things I went through that I'm so grateful for that give me wisdom to be able to handle the things that I go through today. I'm so grateful for all the times that I've messed up. I'm so grateful for all the experiences that I have because God was in them. Whether I was serving him or not, he, would, he allowed me to go through all those things, amen, to gain wisdom and knowledge on how to go forward from that point, amen. But the amazing part is when he gave me the Holy Ghost, then I realized all that stuff, amen, all that wisdom, all that knowledge that I was given, amen, not, was not just for my fleshly, uh, job or, or the thing that I have to take part in, but it was for the kingdom of God. That's how powerful wisdom and knowledge is, is that we can gain it in our flesh, but God uses it for his purpose and for his glory and for his kingdom. Amen. Because we were once a people dead in our, dead in our flesh and dead to sin where, where we were going to die in a fiery hell, but God breathes his spirit into us. And now we have the ability, amen, to operate as his children for his purpose. But that's only by the Spirit of God. If we look at the word knowledge in the Greek, or in the Hebrew, excuse me, as we read there in uh, Genesis 2 and 9, it's the word da'ath, which means knowledge. It could mean cunning or ignorantly, or knowledge or, or awares or wittingly, amen. And we've been breaking down these Hebrew words, amen, because every single Hebrew letter has a, uh, a meaning or a pictograph attached to it. So that picture has a meaning, but it also has a numerical value as well. So if we look at these letters broken down with the meanings of the pictograph, knowledge, we can see that the first, uh, the first letter there, the pictograph is a picture of a door, Ayan is the picture of an eye, and Tav is a cross or sign. So we can look at it and we can see that knowledge is the door by which we see things. Knowledge is the way that we comprehend things going on within our life. And the ultimate means of knowledge is with the cross. When God changes our life and we gain an understanding of his word and we gain knowledge within the scriptures and once we gain knowledge within uh, the, the, the things that God wants us to take part of, then we see the most important part of 
the knowledge that we've been giving, which is the cross. Amen. So knowledge is so important. If we see, uh, if we look at the Hebrew word uh, da'ath used here in the context of Genesis 2 and 9, there's something interesting about it, amen, and we talked about this last week, but the first time knowledge is used, it has the letter hey, uh, it has a letter hey uh, attached to it, amen, and as we've talked about previously, the letter hey means uh, beholding, but it also means the breath of God. So knowledge not only in itself is powerful, but the first time it's truly given in a sense that it matters, as we see here described as the knowledge of good and evil, it has a hay attached to it. Amen. So God is breathing knowledge. God breathes knowledge once that uh, fruit is taken part of. God is breathing that knowledge of good and evil into uh, whoever partakes in it. Amen. And that's why God specifically said, don't take part of this. Amen. Don't take part of this. Because when, uh, if we look at the rabbinical tradition of, of what the hay involved in this word is, it says the difference between uh, da'at and, and ha-da'at is that in the Hebrew, obviously it includes the hey, but it refers to knowledge and understanding. But when you add the hey, it implies a specific and well-defined understanding of something. And that's why when knowledge is described the first time, it's a specific means of knowledge that God would give to the partaker of that which was good and evil. Amen. And God has allowed his humanity to be created by which he understood and he gave a backup plan if his humanity failed. God already knew humanity was going to fail. And that's why the breath of God is poured into knowledge. Amen. That's why knowledge, the first time it's used, has the hay combined with it. Because God is trying to say, my, my spirit is also, my, or the hay is breathed through knowledge unto these people. And so what's the, the, the importance of good and evil? Amen. We see in slide seven here that good is the word uh, tobe, which means to be, to be good. And in the widest sense, be, do, do better, cheer, be, good, goodly, please, and well. Amen. So if we look at the Hebrew letters here for the word Tob, amen, it's the letter uh, Tet, Vav, and Bet. And the interesting, with, the interesting thing with Hebrew words is that when there's a Vav in the middle, it brings two things together, amen. So uh, the Vav is a nail in itself. So we bring together two things, amen, or which is uh, a serpent, which is cunning and, and full of knowledge, amen, which is... <clears throat> is uh, it's a, a container by which that God uses, Amen. the The scripture says, "Be be cunning as as a serpent, Amen." But also we see uh, the letter bet involved, which is a house or a tent flap. So good, it is what can, what is contained within the house. What is good has to be contained within the house, Amen. Because we can say good things. We can have good actions, but good has to be contained within us. It's something that has to be birthed within us. Why? Because it's not something that's natural. Our human tendency, amen, is to be evil. And the interesting thing about that is that evil, if we look at that word, is a resh and two ions, or which is a head and two eyes. So it's by our eyes and head, as we are reading what's on the bottom, is what leads us towards things that could be evil. Our eyes tempt us, and when we act on that action within our mind, then it becomes evil. Why? Because we have knowledge of that thing. And that's why it's knowledge, the first time it's used, is described as good and evil because one thing is natural to us and one thing is not. 
God instills certain things into us through knowledge. But at the same time, evil is our nature because we're born into this world in sin. Amen. Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that, get, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. Our knowledge is so important. But the most important thing is that it's God-given knowledge. Amen. I don't want to, to go about and trying to, to gain understanding in the things of this world. Is that okay? I mean, sure. We all have a job. We all have specific things that we need to take care of. We all need to uh, get better at certain things in order to uh, help our, our jobs or, or uh, schooling or, or whatever these things may be. But I'm telling you this, when we gain a knowledge of the Word of God, something special happens, amen? The, the scripture says with all of our getting, we should get understanding, and understanding is knowledge. I want to get a grip of what the Word of God says. I want to gain understanding of what the Bible is trying to teach me, amen, because there's life and death within uh, the means of this book. Amen. I want to live. I want to be born again. I want to take part in of which that God has promised each and every single one of us to take part of. Amen. God wants us all to take part of his word. God wants every single person to get their face buried in within that book. And do you know why? Because I can't live on my own knowledge. I can't live on my, my uh, I can live on my, my physical skills but those are God-given. If I didn't have my skills, I wouldn't be able to take care of my family. But God in His grace and mercy has given me the ability to do that. But it's my choice whether I get to use the gifts that He's given me for His purpose or for His glory rather than trying to uh, fulfill the ways of my flesh. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2, 9-14 through 14 says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know, because they are spiritually discerned. I want to close with just the idea of this, that there is nothing that we do for God that looks spectacular to the world. Every single thing that God has us do, every single action that God has us, uh, that God enable us, enables us to do through His Spirit is contrary to the world. God says, be humble if somebody rips you off. God says, uh, God says be, uh, have humility, amen, in a time when somebody is, is telling you that you're doing something wrong. My dad or, or <laughs> the world would tell me that, no, you stand up to him and say, no, you're wrong. And, and we allow ourselves to get so caught up in that mindset of the world while still trying to serve God. But we have to be careful. We have to be careful with the, the things that we're participating in. We have to be uh, careful that we're uh, what we're allowing to be gained within our minds through knowledge, amen. There's all this social media and all this stuff. We're just bombarded with all this information. We're bombarded with all this knowledge of the world. But I just, can I spend 2.4 hours of my day just tithing time to God in my day? Can I just give him just a couple hours of my day just to try and, and spend time with him? He's, he's worth that time. 
He's worth that time in prayer. He's worth that time in, in gaining knowledge and, and uh, having him uh, bestow upon us wisdom through the word of God. Amen. Because we're all going to go through things. We're all going to struggle with stuff. We're all going to go through uh, pain. We're all going to go through hurt. But the word of God has the answer for your situation. The word of God has an answer uh, for your struggle. Amen. If you don't know what to do, the word of God is going to tell you. If you don't know what to do, somebody can use, somebody can, uh, God can use somebody through the mouth of that human being to help you through your situation, through a word of knowledge, through a word of wisdom. Amen. <coughs> God can use the mouth of a human being to try to speak his word to somebody. So as we hear words preached to us, as we hear uh, people try and speak into our lives, don't just throw it under the rug. Just because it doesn't feel good, just because it doesn't sound the way that you would want it to, it doesn't mean it's not a word from God. And I just want to, I want God to, to allow my spirit to, to take in that word, amen. It is, is, as alive and as powerful and as sharp as the word is, it should never be sharp enough that we can't, accept the word, that we can't receive the word that God's trying to speak to us. Because sometimes it's going to hurt. Just like uh, if you get in a fight, amen, you're going to get some wounds, you're going to get some, some bloody marks, you're going to get some, some things, but after the fight, that's all you remember because in the moment, you're sitting there and you're, you're doing your thing, but after the fact, the only thing that you have to remember are all the scars and all the things that, that have happened. And that's how going through things in life is, is that I have these things and I have these memorials and I have these landmarks of things that God has allowed me to go through. But am I just going to throw away that knowledge? Am I just going to throw away what God's trying to, to do through me in my life and allow me to see these, these battle wounds and the, all these scars, amen, of all these things that I've, I've gone through in my life? I can't throw that stuff away. I have to hold on to that knowledge. Hold on to the wisdom that it's given me, amen, so that I can help somebody else. The, the use of the gifts of the Spirit is not to help me, it's to help somebody else. It's to edify the body of Jesus Christ by which that He gives us these gifts, amen. When God, God might give you a gift, God might give me a gift, God might give somebody else a gift, it doesn't matter who has a gift, but it matters how it affects the body. God's going to use somebody. Why not use me, God? Why not use me in these spiritual gifts? I'm willing. The, the scripture says, uh, Paul explains that we should all earnestly contend for the best gifts. The best gifts, amen. And the best gifts express that is prophecy. Prophecy is expressed as the best gift, amen. And prophecy comes forth and not everybody's going to like the prophet of God. Not everybody's going to like what comes out of the mouth of the prophet. Amen. Because when a prophet speaks, it usually comes with a if factor. If you do this, this is going to be the result. But if you don't, this will be the result. And oftentimes it's hard to hear that. As a, as a dad of two kids and I have a wife... I tell my children often, if you do this, this is going to be the result because I've been there before. If you do this, this is going to be the result because I've seen this before. Is that prophecy? No. That's wisdom. I'm, I'm giving my child a, a word of wisdom in a situation and letting him gain the knowledge of messing up. Letting him gain the experience through wisdom of messing up in his life. But when a prophet speaks a word, amen, it's for something that's going to happen in the future. If we partake or if we don't partake in what God is trying to speak to the body is where our destiny or, or what is said can be fulfilled or not. I want to receive, I want to, I want to hear the prophet speak to me. I want to listen to the man of God speaking into my life, amen, uh, not everybody is going to be used in all these spiritual gifts. Not everybody has all the spiritual gifts, amen. But why don't we take the idea that we should just earnestly contend for the best ones. And whatever God gives us, 
Why don't we use it? Just like the skills that he gives you at work, just like the skills that he gives you to operate um, at work, amen, God has given me certain skills and certain things, and he enables me to operate in those. So who am I to say, God, you can't use me that way? Or, or to, to <laughs> when God tries to use somebody in spiritual gifts, they're going to know because it don't feel very good when you try to suppress uh, which, what God is trying to operate through you for. Amen. I told the story of when God used me through tongues and interpretation a couple times. One time I didn't let it out and it felt like I was going to explode. And then all of a sudden I hear, boom, the word exactly that God was going to give me spoken. And I said, well, I missed it. Didn't feel very good. But the time that I did let it out, man, it was it was like you were fulfilling something that you've never done in your life before. It was like, uh, it was like having a brand new uh, experience with God. So the gifts don't always come easy to operate in. But that's why it takes a yielding. That's why it takes an um, operation in order to maneuver in these gifts. So as we do operate in these gifts, I mean, people in this place have gifts of the Spirit they don't realize. People have gifts in this room that they don't realize they already operate in. Amen. As I was talking about with the gifts of the Spirit um, two weeks ago with uh, tongues and interpretation, how do we know, or uh, excuse me, introducing what the gifts are, how do we know that somebody has a gift we see them operate in it, amen? And when you see a young child who has no skills at something, but they already are very talented at using a gift, he has a gift, amen? And, and God uses us in those methods. God uses us in those ways within the Spirit. I've seen God operate through many people in here through gifts of the Spirit. Continue to use those gifts. Continue to operate through those gifts. Continue to, to allow God to use you. Continue to let him do what he wants to do through you. But it takes you getting out of the way in order for God to operate. It takes me getting out of the way in order for God to give what he wants to say. <coughs> God's going to use a human being to relay his word. God is going to use mankind to relay his word. Who am I that he's mindful of, of me? Who am I that God would use me to speak his word to somebody? I don't deserve that. But God in his righteousness and his love for us says here, you've been born again. You've, you've partaken of my spirit. You've been washed by my blood. Here's my righteousness, and here's gifts. Amen. We see as Jesus was freshly born in a manger, amen, we see men walk up to him with frankincense and myrrh. I'm sure his parents were like, what is going on? Where do these people come from? But that's how God operates us through gifts. They just appear, and God wants us to operate in those gifts. It's a definitely a type and shadow of how we are. When we're born again into the kingdom, God fills us with his righteousness, and then we operate with the gifts that show up, with, with what God's trying to use you for. Amen? So as we, as we stand, I just want each and every one of us, as we're all going to pray at some point this week. We're all going to spend some time with Jesus one way or another, but if you feel compelled, and I would earnestly compel you just to ask God, what do you, what do you have for me, Lord? What, where do you want me to operate within your body, God? What is your purpose for me in your kingdom? Because understand this, as we walk towards him, he begins to operate through us. If you're confused about the calling and purpose of your life, just spend some time with him. Just walk with Jesus a little bit, amen, and God will reveal his purpose to you. And as we walk and, and as we may not understand what he's trying to do, his purpose and his calling will be made sure when we're living right for him. Amen.
Why don't we pray? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. God, I thank you for this body. I thank you, Lord, for your spirit. I thank you, God, for the area, Lord Jesus, that you've been having us move in. God, I thank you for the, the dimension, Lord Jesus, by which that you're taking this body as we operate and as we move together, Lord. I'm so grateful for each and every new soul that walks into this house, God. Help us, Lord Jesus, to disciple. Help us, God, to be operated in the gifts, Lord Jesus, to edify your body. Lord Jesus, honor your word and let us see it fulfilled, God. Let us see signs and wonders following us, Lord Jesus, as we believe, Lord Jesus, and as we operate as your body. Let us see your word fulfilled, God. Hallelujah. I know you're a, a true God. I know that you're faithful to your word, Lord. I ask, God, that you would just show up in the place, Lord Jesus, and operate and move in the, in the means and in the operation, God, by which that you want to do, Lord Jesus. Let your will and your purpose be fulfilled, God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Let's give him a hand clap.